Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepandjeep.com. Today we are working on full hydro steering. Now I've gotten a lot of comments that you guys would like it if I would explain more what I'm doing because a lot of times I'll just do something like a long arm kit and I won't really explain what a long arm is for. So I'm going to try to oblige and explain things a little better. So uh, where should I start? We're doing full hydro and full hydro is different than regular steering because um, full hydro uses hydraulic lines to push this cylinder back and forth. What that means is I don't have to have a steering box, I don't have to have a pitman arm and a drag link, I don't have to have any hard connections coming down to the axle. The only thing I have to have to steer are two rubber hydraulic lines that go into this um, into this ram, what they call it, a ram. And this is a double-ended ram. They make a single-ended ram as well, but this is a double-ended ram. It's got uh, two rams that push out on either side of this cylinder. So, um, those, those uh, ends here, what they do is push in and out on your knuckles, and that moves the tires, okay? So the thing is though that you have to attach this to your axle and since we are installing this on a narrow axle, this is a Dana 44 off of a TJ, it makes it a little more difficult because I have to contend with the um, diff cover. Now there's a lot of different ways you can install these. It doesn't have to be on center, it can be off center a little bit and I've tried every possible scenario. None of the scenarios get me exactly where I want to be as far as um, in the right spot, but what I'm doing is just uh, gonna get it as best as I can. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna cut into the diff cover. We're gonna slide this back and this is gonna be recessed right here into the diff cover and then uh, eventually I will weld that all up. So this is going to get mounted just about like this, but further in, as far as I can go inboard uh, into this diff cover. Now, when you're mounting a hydraulic ram, there's a couple things that you want to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be on center, but you can, uh, you know, try to get it on center as possible because if not, your uh, basically your tie rods over here, the links that are going to your knuckles will be different lengths and that doesn't really matter but if it's too long it might make it a little weaker okay number two is you want to get it at the right height so if you look over here at this knuckle I'll show you in a second but when you rotate this it comes high up here and low down here now you're going to take the average of the high and low in this case uh, it's going to mount at about 8 inches high and that's going to be uh, the center of the ram where I want this. So I've got this level on the table, this is in the exact position basically that it's going to be under the Jeep at the right pinion angle. Move that back and forth you get about 7 inches and 8.5 and inches um, or 7.5 and, and 8.5 and I would say and then in the middle is 8 inches so you want to get the, at the right height as well and then the third thing you want to do is get it um, inboard or outboard at the right distance. So another thing you do is you push this out, you take that measurement from the axle tube center, and then you push it in, take that measurement from the axle tube center, and then you want to meet in the middle. So basically what I'm saying is that this basically needs to be right about here and I've measured that out from this line it's five and one eighth inch to this line so I've also put a piece of tape on the ram I've marked it in the center and I've done that on both sides uh, so I could have mounted it like this or I can mount it like this and so after all of that after you measure all of that you will figure out exactly where your ram needs to be. Now whether or not you can put it in that spot 
is another thing. So um, I'm going to get it as close as I can. Okay, so I know about where I want this thing, and I don't have to have it perpendicular. I can tilt this any way I need to as long as it's in the right spot. So to help me out with that, uh, since I can't set it at an angle on these blocks, I've actually built my own blocks um, just out of some 2x4s. I've cut a half circle on the top there, and I've positioned them at just the right height that I need this mounted. And let's see if I can get this. Let's take these out of the way. All right, so now with these blocks, I can actually tilt this wherever I need it to fit it best. So we're working with the PSC here to do the full hydro. PSC makes um, everything you need including the, uh, the power steering pump and the reservoir and the cylinders and, and all that stuff. And then we are also working with the ox locker here. And this is a cast steel. On the website it says it's weldable, so uh, hopefully that won't be a problem to cut into this. And on the back side of this ram, there is, uh, this is aluminum back here, but this is steel where it bolts into and that sandwiches. Um, the cylinder so I should be able to weld that steel part into the housing once I get that cut out so I've also I've also had to consider how far I can cut into this uh, housing I'm going to be cutting all the way through it and part of this is going to be sticking out inside the housing but I think I've measured it out just right so that when the carrier, when this is sitting in there with the carrier in it, it's just going to miss um, this metal right here. The ring gear sits on this side and then the bolts are over on this side and hopefully if I do everything right I won't be uh, contacting any metal on the inside here. If I do it wrong I guess I'll be buying a new one. So if you look close, you'll see this line that I've made right here. That's about where I need to cut. I actually need to make that line up higher because it's going to be more up here. So let's put this back in place one more time and try to mark exactly where I'm going to cut. I also need to keep in mind that I still need to be able to get this bolt in right here because I'm very close to that bolt and that's why that's why I didn't put this there's two options when you're mounting this you can put it uh, outboard or inboard right here the the mounts um, this one right here would have covered up this bolt and it would have just made things a lot harder I've I've looked into every option here and I think this one's gonna be the best one I know there's gonna be people out there that say oh you should have done it like this you just should have done it like that but just trust me when I say I've uh, looked at every option here and uh, this is where I think it needs to be. Alright, so as far as I can tell, that's where I need to cut. I'm going to start off uh, inboard just a little bit, make everything a little bit smaller than I think it needs to be that way I don't screw up. Just give it a shot. Okay, it's a little jagged and sketchy at the moment, but I'll get the uh, grinder out here in a second and clean that up. Um, if I put this up against it, it's very close. It looks like it needs to uh, be up a little higher. I might have cut down a little bit too low. 
but I will make it work somehow. So I'm gonna get that grinder, clean it up, and see what happens. So for that, I'll use an angle grinder with a grinding wheel. I've been using cutoff wheel, which is a lot thinner. And this is the grinding wheel, which will just grind that down. All right, it uh, needs some work. It looks like it needs to be a lot taller and a little bit wider. This might take a little time, so I will get back with you whenever I get this opened up the right size. All right, guys, check this out. That was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. It's actually very hard to put a square peg into a round hole here. So this is the shape that I ended up coming up with, and that fits the, uh, the block on the back of there nicely. Um, hopefully it's not sticking inside too far. I guess time will tell. Um, right now I'm going to tack it up on the outside. Um, then I'll check the inside, see if it uh, clears everything. Then I'll start working on attaching this side over here. First thing we should do is prepare it for welding by getting rid of some of this powder coat around the edges here where I'm going to weld and on the inside too. Alright, before I tack that up, I don't know if you can see right here, um, it's kind of blocking the hole a little bit. I can still get this in there, but I just want to clearance that to make it a little easier. And then I want to uh, shave this down here so it kind of matches the cover instead of having this big point. So uh, I'm going to do that with the angle grinder and um, then I can tack it up. Alright guys, I've got it tacked up. Now I'm going to take uh, these bolts out, pull it out, and check the inside. But what I wanted to show you also is that I couldn't get it in as far as I wanted to. If you'll see, there's about a quarter inch gap right there. Um, and I thought I was going to have to deal with it, but I just realized that if I uh, take this aluminum block off and I shave a quarter inch off of that aluminum block, that will bring it in. Uh, inboard quarter inch more without affecting anything else so uh, that's what I'm going to do I might have to shave the ends of the bolts down a little bit to accommodate but other than that I think it's going to work now remember the reason that I wanted to get that in as far as possible was so that this will line up with this I don't want uh, the ram to be way out here in which case the tie rods would be pointed backwards like this and it would have a lot of force on this ram. So you want to get that straight in line as possible and that's what I'm doing. By pushing it back it'll be straight in line uh, with the knuckle over here. Kind of looks cool when you see it like that. Okay, let's check and see if that's going to clear. And it does. It's got plenty of room in there. So, we're good to go. Alright guys, now if you'll notice, uh, since we did this, I made a hole in the cover. Once we weld that up, there'll still be this hole. I could um, use RTV when I put the bolt in, but I'd rather just have it filled solid so that there's no chance of it leaking. So what I did, I took a little piece of scrap steel that I had lying around. I used a, uh, a hole saw. I cut me out a little piece. Now I need to um, fill that in with weld first. And then I'll use that as a plug to uh, just plug that up real quick. All 
All right, guys, the next thing I want to do is make a little more clearance right here. So I'm going to grind a quarter inch of this off. I think to do that, I'll put it in my vise, use a flap wheel to get most of it, and then we'll go over to the sander and make it completely flat. Alright guys, check it out. Now it's a quarter inch thinner. That was a real pain in the butt though because uh, aluminum gums up everything. It gums up your sandpaper and your angle grinder and all that. But uh, finally got it pretty smooth and that's going to recess this in quite a bit longer. Uh, aluminum also gets very, very hot without you being able to tell that it's hot. So keep that in mind burnt my finger once on this stuff already. Check it out. It's looking really good now. I have uh, got it to within a half inch off center. I'd say that's less than a half inch off center to the passenger side. Um, I've used a digital angle gauge here to check and make sure that everything was uh, perfectly straight and level. And the only thing I need to do now is to make some kind of a bracket on the left side here to hold uh, this side of the ram. Uh, I'm going to uh, do that tomorrow, but for you guys, it'll be just a second. Now it's time to work on this other mount over here. For that, I have this big chunk of steel right here that I'm going to use. But it's a very complex angle right here, so the first thing I'm going to do is get out a piece of paper. We will make a template out of this piece of paper and then uh, I can probably trace that right onto uh, this piece of metal. Sometimes I will use um, uh, this white poster board stuff that I forget what it's called. Uh, thick poster board stuff but I think I can probably just make this one out of paper. Now the reason I need to make this super strong is because this ram is going to be having the force of all those huge tires pushing back and forth. So this needs to be welded up nice and tight so that it won't break off or go anywhere. Alright, I used to have a little tool that would actually push on there and would give you the, uh, the layout. It looked like a bunch of little needles and you would push it on there and it would then you could trace it on your template. I don't know where that is, so after a bunch of trial and error, I came up with this pattern right here. And so I'm going to need two of those, and that fits perfectly right there, and that uh, I will make out of this metal. And one will go on either side, then we'll weld it all up. After a couple years of cutting and grinding and finessing, you'll end up with two of these. And uh, it fits just like a puzzle piece right inside here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to bevel the edges of both sides so that when we weld it, it will uh, have better penetration. And then uh, we'll go from there. I think there's a hole behind here where this bracket attaches. I think I'll probably fill that up first so that it doesn't look like I welded over a hole. 
But before I can do that, I don't know about you, but I find it really hard to work with all this mess, so I'm going to clean that up first. Much better. Alright, I've got those beveled nice everywhere I need to. The reason that you do that is because when you go to weld them together, the weld will sit nice right in that little groove right there and it gives it a lot better penetration. Alright, so now I want to cover this hole. To do that I've got a two inch hole saw and I'll take a piece of this a quarter inch plate. Probably use a little thick, uh, thinner if I had it. I'll go look over there. But I just need to um, drill this and uh, cut a hole out so that I can weld it in there. Ooh, that's hot. After I cut it, it was still a little big, so I ground it down to fit inside that hole. Now let's uh, tack it in place. Now you'll never even know there was a hole there. Well alright guys, that's all I've got for you for this video, but make sure to stay tuned because coming up soon we're going to be adding some armor and also the upper links to this axle. Thanks to TMR, we have this really cool, uh, what do you call this, upper link kit. Well, actually, it's not an upper link kit. This is supposed to be on the body side of a buggy, but I'm going to use it as an upper link kit for my axle. It's going to go right about there. That's the plan anyway. And then this is going to go right about there. And uh, that'll be just kind of like a cover protector for the PSC RAM. And it's also going to protect these lines up top here. So uh, that's going to look pretty sweet, I do believe. So uh, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.